as one interconnected ocean, a vast blue expanse critical to life on Earth. And there's no better animal to represent the story of the ocean with all its splendor and uncertainty than the killer whale, or as it's scientifically known, the Orsinus orca. The orca lives in every corner of the ocean, from the Arctic to the Atlantic, the Southern to the Indian, to the mighty Pacific and beyond. This whale's story is the ocean's story, and it is one we all share. Welcome to Arc Encounter. My name's Elizabeth, and I'm honored to introduce you to this intriguing and majestic animal. behaviors. We hope this Orca encounter will help give you a better understanding of this magnificent creature and all that they represent. While they are found in every ocean, orcas living off the coast of Iceland are quite different than those near Costa Rica. In fact, there are at least 10 types or ecotypes of killer whales. An ecotype describes the differences between killer whale size, physical form, prey, social structure, and habitat. As you can see, the differences are subtle, but noticeable when compared side by side. Orcas are adapted perfectly to their environments. And even the whale's black and white coloration has a purpose. It camouflages the outline of their bodies in the water, making it easier for them to surprise and catch their prey. When viewed from above, the black of the whale blends in with the dark depths of the ocean. When viewed from below, the orca's white bellies match the brighter surface of the water, blending with the light above, giving them the perfect camouflage. wonder and orchid and the kind will help show you some of their physical characteristics. Their blowhole is perfectly designed for grabbing a quick breath of air from the surface of the water. Even their eyes work to their advantage. You might think their eyes in that white patch on either side of their head but that's a visual distraction. Their eyes in the corner of their mouth in the black space camouflage from thrashing prey. That tall fin on their back is called a dorsal fin. It helps to stabilize them when they swim and regulate their body temperature. 
Now you may notice that since there is no bone or muscle structure inside, it may begin to curve over time. Unlike those pectoral flippers on either side of their body, those have five bony digits inside, just like the human hand. The pectoral flippers are mostly used for steering and stopping. The lobes on either end of their tail are called flukes. This is our killer whale's engine. Killer whales can swim up to 30 miles per hour, which is as fast as a speedboat. Now they swim the fastest and use the most energy when they propel their nearly 10,000 pound bodies all the way up and out of the water. Killer whales are highly social animals with a well-defined social structure. An orca pod is always led by a female. Though just half the size of her male counterpart, she is in charge. It's all about attitude, not size. Because they live and work as a group, orcas need to communicate with sounds and body language. Orcas use clicks for echolocation or navigation. Whistles to socialize in the pot. And calls for group coordination and hunting. development studies here at SeaWorld show that early on, calves learn vocalization from their mothers. But as they grow, they learn from others close to them as well. This is a bottlenose dolphin call that Shuka learned and even taught other killer whales here at SeaWorld. In fact, orcas are the largest members of the dolphin family. Whales here and in the wild use vocalization to communicate all the time. Like all animals, killer whales also use body language as a form of communication. A pectoral slap at the surface of the water is used to show dominance or even to get noticed. For example, a mother might use a peck slap to get her calf's attention. But when they really want to be heard, they breathe. Spy hopping is how killer whales coordinate when they hunt and get a better view of their surroundings. Killer whales work together to rear their young 
protect their pod, and most importantly, pursue and catch their prey. Every day they cooperate to survive in the wild oceans of the world. The orca's hunting techniques are as varied as the whales themselves. Norwegian killer whales will circle herring, herding them together. The whales use sounds to coordinate with each other and to disorient the herring. With the fish confused and contained, the whales stun them with their powerful tail flukes, making for an easy meal. Breaking out of the water for a 
basically. when they can. We see our whales swimming in here just like whales do in British Columbia. You'll also see whales imitate each other in the wild. We see it here at SeaWorld all the time. The whales are always mimicking and learning from one another. A tail whip is used in hunting to stun fish, but today that same tail whip might just be stunning all of you. participating in many research studies. One ongoing study monitors the whale's heart rate and breathing to understand how marine noise pollution from ship engines and other sources affect wild populations. In another study, scientists from NOAA, 
the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration took measurements of the killer whales living here, including pregnant whales. By comparing these measurements with drone footage of killer whales in the wild, scientists are able to monitor the wild population's nutritional and reproductive states. Other research has been done here at SeaWorld on the mother whale's milk composition. This research will help create an effective model to understand how toxins in the ocean impact wild killer whales and their milk supply. Okay. What we learn from the whales in our care every day is actively helping whales in the wild survive. And just by being here today, you supported our rescue, research, and conservation efforts all around the world. If we work together, like the killer whale, we can protect the future of the Orsinus orca and this beautiful planet that we all share. We hope you enjoyed our presentation, and we do want to remind you that we ask that you remain seated for the time being, so that we can release the amphitheater row by row and section by section. Our ambassadors are making their way through the stadium with colored flags to let you know